Hello and welcome to the program Connect with Enoch. This is where we connect with all and sundry. We talk to various leaders, journalists, officers, senior citizens, each and every person, and we talk to you as well. And today we are very privileged to have a senior colleague, a man I regard in very high esteem. When it comes to politics, government, He's an expert there, and equally an expert in business. His name is Foster Kofi Awovi. He's my guest on Enoch Connect today. We're going to be discussing some few things. The last time I heard of um, Foster, he was my senior, though. Uh, Fox. Yeah. How, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, yeah, and how are you? I, I heard that you've been given um, some industrial position. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you heard wrong. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not connected to any political party for them to consider me for any political appointment. <laughs> oh, nice one. It's been long since we last met. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes. Welcome to Inner Connect on the Hawk TV. Thank you for having me. Great, 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 great. We're looking at proceedings so far. I mean, the battle of power to know who really controls power in the country. Um, we have Parliament going to court, Supreme Court saying this, saying that, a whole lot of stuff. Are you, are you surprised, I mean, where we've come in a situation where the House of Law has now gone out of that house and they are seeking to understand an interpretation at the Supreme Court. Are you surprised you've come to this very point? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not surprised. Uh, Ghana is a country of rule of law, and we have those who make the law, those who interpret the law, and those who enforce the law. And I believe everybody in this um, area, in this aspect of discussion, are, uh, are exercising their rights in the right way. So Parliament makes the law, and then the judiciary interprets the law. The security of, uh, uh, officers enforce the law. So I'm not surprised that um, um, and then we some the media people media of of also we we the media party we also inform. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We all have our roles to play. Mm. We all have our role to play. So I'm not surprised that uh, people who didn't understand. Uh, some happenings in Parliament a few days ago, a few weeks ago, had to go to the Supreme Court for interpretation. So I think it's in the right right direction. Now let's look at the issue from Parliament, then we we'll go to Supreme Court briefly. Presently, the NDC is claiming to be majority because there are some four vacant seats, and the MPP seem to believe that they still hold that power. Uh, um, yes, my opinion is that we have a hung Parliament. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's a very tight one mm. and everybody will look for any opportunity to claim the majority of the house in order to show some superiority or to get the benefits that comes with it so yes i, I understand uh, that um, uh, characteristics of the current parliaments that we have but it is difficult for me to mention and say at this particular point in time that Party A is a majority and the Party B is a minority. No, it's not for me to do that. They themselves know who holds the majority. They know who holds the minority. But as I, I as I am here, I know it's it's a hung parliament, and the balance of power it's it's in a tight uh, line that can just shift to any party at any time. There are those who hold the school of thought that parliament is alone to itself and therefore do not need any power else or any interpretation from any court, be a supreme or whatever. Do you hold the same opinion or you have a different view on that? Uh, you know, we have three arms of government, the executive, judiciary, and then the legislature. And all these three arms are autonomous in their nature. However, in the same constitution, we have checks and, and balances. So definitely one arm will check the other and the other arm will balance the other. And that's why judiciary makes the law. Sorry, that's why legislature makes the law and judiciary interprets the law. Executive administer uh, the day-to-day -day administration of the country. So everybody has a role to play. So they are autonomous, but yes, they cross-check their powers and activities. Other than that, uh, we will have a lawless country where one institution will say, I am above the law, I can do what I want, and the other institution will say, yes, I'm above the law, I can do what I want. 
then how do we check how do we check and control each other so uh the autonomous but of course they have to check and balance their powers anyway let's go to a supreme court um the noble chief justice refused the application that was fired by speaker bagman um that's really surprised a lot of people i just believe it's well, quite political and there have been a lot of i mean issues after that very ruling well i wasn't surprised of the outcome well in fact i was anticipating the outcome <laughs> and and this is so because we have you know things don't just happen in vacuum we have we, we these precedents have been set we've seen the history we've seen activities people have complained and that have culminated in the decision and activities that happened yesterday for example you have you have um, a, a, a situation where the executive who has all the powers in this country appointing a lot of uh, judiciary uh, staff onto the supreme this, the high bench who are mostly affiliated to his party so if his party is in in some dispute so what do you expect <laughs> you expect that the people that he has appointed who some of them are basically for rewarding them for their loyalty you expect that they will told that um uh, decision and i mean it happened in almost every institution and we know in, in these african country we always want to thank somebody for uh something good he has done for 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 us so if you appoint me into a certain position because of my affiliation to you and 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 your there's a challenge or there's a situation or you're in balance and you need my help i'll, I'll, I'll often most likely come to your aid and in fact that's why i'm not surprised that uh, what happened yesterday it happened if if we have done everything according to law and according to the moral rights and according to natural justice i'm sure the decision that would have come out we wouldn't have to debate on the decision okay. because yeah, okay. Okay. 90 percent of 90 percent of the individuals are looking at the decision in political lenses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you if you appoint a number of the of the judges that, who are affiliated to your party onto the bench and there's a decision that needs to be made which is which is which has to do with your party uh, what do you expect so that's why i as an individual as I, as I stand here and i talk to you i wasn't surprised of the decision and i'm sure a lot of Ghanaians were not surprised of the decision that definitely was going to go in favor of the of the Ruling majority party, the majority in, 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 in parliament oh, let's yes. just say npp because, let's just say npp yes yes yeah. NPP, because if you look at the way they they they, they secure the ex-party uh injunction from from parliament mm -hmm, from sorry mm -hmm. from supreme court the, a few days ago so that's what i'm saying that the history is there the history is there no ex-party from from my lay point of view before you secure that it means that the the party in 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 connection to the to the suit is nowhere to be found it's not available uh you can assess that institution or that person and a decision needs to be taken which will definitely affect the decision of the country or the active the ruling of the country but there's a situation where look at where the supreme court is and look at where parliament house is <laughs> the, the speaker of parliament is in the country and then i'm sure at that time that when they were securing their expertise it was it was in parliament by then they could have just called him they could have you know <laughs> you know that's what i'm saying that the history has been said so based on all that for me i wasn't surprised of the decision because one plus one plus one knows that it's going to three <laughs> you, you don't need anybody to tell you that it was going to happen i i i, I yes I, I know that we have intelligence we have honest people in the judiciary i don't dispute that and I'm, I'm, that's not what i'm talking about okay. what i am saying is that we have seen what has happened in these few years where we have packed the supreme court but one particular individual and these people that he has had majority of them have affiliate to his political party hmm. that is what i'm saying in your Even opinion we have we have judges mm -hmm. who are who are very honest that when you mention their name people mm. will bow to them mm -hmm, i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not i'm mm -hmm. not against although that's not what i'm saying yeah. what i'm saying is that we have a situation in this country where we like to say thank you it's in our, it's mm -hmm. in our culture yes it is so when you see people when you see a, a powerful person uh, giving position to some people 
and then there's a situation and you call them say oh my brother i mean i mean i'm in trouble even if you don't call them even if you don't call them once they know that this has to do with you and they don't recuse themselves from the decision definitely what do you expect <laughs> hmm. Maybe that's what i'm saying that that is quite an interesting point because of justice gawu because he was seen to be someone who contested on the ticket of the npp uh, at a point in time and during the veteran it came out that it came up and it became a whole lot of issues but at long run he was approved so yes. he realized um, back being some lawyer had issue with, with him being part of the panel of judges, but exactly, mm. exactly. And I don't know what so it is. If, 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 one of if, them was is is, is mm-hmm. the reference on um, Benzakumba was a CV. One of the judges. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So people who are affiliated to you. So when those issues come, it will be difficult. So it would have been nice if those people had recused themselves from the panel. Then we can have a fair discussion. But if those people were part of the panel and they made the decision, you don't expect me to think otherwise. So, would you then say, as is going around, people are saying that the Supreme Court, in a way, with all due respect to the noble Supreme Court, is like it's becoming more of a political institution than a state institution. Would you say something like that? Um well so far actions actions seem to speak to to your point but i believe it's not too late it can be checked it can be controlled it can be reversed like like i said earlier even Mm. after all these that have happened when a panel was constituted and we're going to talk about decision which was which but let's let's talk about conflict of interest you could have just recused yourself these individuals who are affiliated to the particular party npp they could have just refused themselves from oh because of a b c d in, in the past even if your decision is positive people are going to reminisce into it if it's negative they're going to reminisce into it so the best thing is to recuse yourself and i believe that's the most honest thing one 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 can do and i believe if they have done that probably it would have saved the country a lot there are those who also hold the opinion that looking at the posture the way cj yesterday delivered her ruling it looks as if she was either harsh angry or she was being overreactive a lot of people have said that uh, would you say same did you see something like that um unfortunately i i, I didn't notice that Okay. But like like I've said earlier, people are looking at this decision with a lot of political lens. Through okay. the political lens, yes. So let me re- restate again: if some of these judges have recused themselves, I am not sure this question would even come up. Okay. You get the point I'm making. Okay. But because all those people were there, you have been reading minutes into the the uh, chief justice uh, uh, posture. Yeah. Mm yes but i know sometimes the judges if you look watch court proceeding and follow court proceeding sometimes the judges get emotional get mm-hmm, uh, you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, they speak out so let me use the word speak out okay they speak out and i believe probably that's what she did yesterday okay but because of the political lens associated with this decision and these activities and that's why we are looking at it hmm. in those in those previous situations where the judges spoke out because they were not affiliated to the issues you didn't read any minutes into it mm. Mm. that's my mm. point you know looking at the constitution there's a very good reason why it says that three months to general elections there shouldn't be anything like um, bylaws or it uh, wasn't it by election. elections and so on and so forth so which means that the constitution believe that during that period is a hated political season and that all those who are contesting obviously will be at the various constituencies campaigning and will be interacting with the people to do whatever thing that they have to do for them so that is the wisdom of the constitution in my opinion not the general so if she gives a reason that making this seat vacant or declaring this seat vacant will deprive those people in those constituencies you think it's valid enough in your opinion um first of all i i think the premise of the constitution believe that three months to election uh, is just too short to hold a by-election 
before you hold the main election. Mm -hmm. If you look mm -hmm. at the cost, mm -hmm. if you look mm -hmm. at the cost to the country, you look at the human resources and all of that, mm -hmm. it will be a drain on the on the nation. And that's why I believe they frame that the frame constitution in that way that exactly. within three months the election mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there shouldn't be any by election. Because man, if you want election within two months you're going to hold another election again so mm -hmm, man, mm -hmm. look at the cost and look at all that so i believe that was the mindset of the of the framers of the policy that they said that um within three months to election there shouldn't be any by election mm -hmm. and then the i, I do not yeah. hold the mm -hmm. view i mm -hmm. do not hold the view of, of or i disagree with the with the judgment that uh, in, in the seat were declared vacant, the people would not have uh, uh, what do you call it uh, representation. representation. Yeah, we have we have uh, uh, the the constituency in the in the Uti region is it Lulubi and the, and the, the, the four areas. Mm -hmm. They have been without representation for four years. Four years. <laughs> For four years, <laughs> and what has the Supreme Court said about it? Nothing. Was the issue was the issue not sent to court? Mm. What, what was their decision? So that's that's like double standard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they don't hold that view. <laughs> secondly, secondly, mm -hmm. assuming assuming God forbid that uh, 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 an MP an MP dies right now, mm -hmm. are you going to say that? Uh, because they are going, to, they are not going to represent us. So they should hold the by election right now. No, no, no. That's no, a good question. You're not going to say that. You are not going to say that because the constitution says that three months to election, no by election. Mm. And so it means that if an MP should die right now, those people will not be represented for the next three months to election. Are you going to hold a by election? Hmm. That's why that's why I disagree <laughs> with the decision of the of the Supreme Court. Because mm. I, I, I if you if you do that, look at Nolobi and the rest. Four years, no representation. And you didn't see anything wrong with it. Just three months to election, seat has been declared vacant. He said no, because if you declare vacant, the people will not be represented. I think that's not fair. That's <laughs> not fair to say the least, <laughs> to use an, a nicer word. <laughs> mm, I see. Yes. That's quite interesting. Anyway, um, viewer, if you just join us, this is the Hawk TV having one on one with a senior colleague, um, a well respected journalist, media practitioner, Foster Kofi V of the Business Week. Um, just going by, just share some few words as, uh, as, as um, uh, about what happened at the Supreme Court, and we're still discussing it. Yeah, Fox, let's proceed further. Um, this whole thing started as a result of the fact that some MP decided that they were going to go independent and this and that, this and that. So let's go back to 2020. What happened when Andrew Siama decided that he was going to go independent? At that moment, the then General Secretary of the NPP wrote to Parliament that the seat should be declared vacant. Further, um, the NPP constitution also says that any day, any time that a member of their party decides to go independent, it means automatically that person is off or dismissed from the party. So that being said, looking at 2020, Andrew Isayama, um decided to go independent. And a, a letter was written to the speaker that um, he should be dismissed because he has decided to go independent. And per the MPP constitution, the moment we decide that, okay, I'm going to go independent, automatically you are out of the party. So what has changed in 2024? Um, <clears throat> nothing has changed. <laughs> hmm. So in 2020, uh, there was a discussion or comments and argument that what Speaker Aaron Quay did was an illegality. I hold a different view. Okay. Yes, per your, your, per your preface. Okay. It's in the NPP constitution mm. that immediately you declare that mm. you are no longer a member of the party, you are not going on the ticket of the party, you leave the party. Mm. And once you leave the party, it means that you cannot hold representation in the parliament. Mm. So that's why they informed the House and the Speaker took the decision to declare his seat vacant. Mm -hmm. And you get it. Yeah. I don't think there was any legality because mm. even. <laughs> Sorry, even even the uh, what does the constitution say with regards to when you cross carpet in parliament? You leave, and the by election is held. Yes, and this has happened in the past. I I I, I try to remember the one 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 MP from the north or so 
Yeah. When he declared, mm -hmm. he declared uh, his intention to move to the other party. What happened? They declared his seat vacant. A by election was held. Absolutely. There's there's no discussion that that decision was for a future election. No. If that was it, then the premise of the constitution wouldn't have put it in the constitution in the first place. Because if the election is for 2025, 2024, 2025 year, then why would they say that immediately you declare usually parliament? Because if you declare the election is December and you're coming to office in 2025, then then there's no need to take, vacate your seat in parliament. You are declaring it now because today, as we are speaking, you are in parliament on a ticket of MPP, on a ticket of NDC. Mm. So immediately you declare that, oh, even though I'm on a ticket of MPP or on a ticket of NDC, in 2025, when I'm coming back, I am not going coming back as MPP. I'm not coming back as NDC. Mind you, the election is in December 2024. Okay. Your campaigning and everything is in 2024. Mm. And if you declare that I, Kofi, I don't belong to NPP any longer, and yet I'm in parliament representing NPP, is that not double standard? That is. If I declare that I'm not a member of NDC, so I'm going to do uh, my independent stuff, or I'm going to do something for NDC, uh, NPP, then why am I representing NP NDC in this current situation? Correct. Double standard. Mm. And let me give you a little analogy. Let me move away from Parliament a little bit. Mm. Assuming I travel outside on the ticket of a, a business week for a conference, mm -hmm. and during the conference I'm making a presentation, and something something happens, and I in a presentation I declare to the whole world that as I'm standing here with the immediate effect, I'm no longer representing business week. Mm -hmm. What do you think will happen? You have to leave. that immediately. I have to leave the conference. Because mm -hmm. I went on a conference on a ticket of Business Week. I was invited to the conference on a ticket of Business Week. Wow. If I wasn't, if I wasn't a staff of Business Week, I, I wouldn't have been invited to that conference. Wow. All the privileges that, that came to me in attending the conference was because of my association with Business Week. Mm. So immediately I declare at that conference that I am no longer representing Business Week. It means that I have to leave. Whether the conference is over or not, I have to leave. Wow, wow, wow. It's simple as that. <laughs> it, it, it's not for me to tell the organizer of the conference that, oh, let me enjoy this benefit. Next four years, when I'm coming for the conference, I will not come in the name of Business Week. No, it doesn't work like that. Wow. Assuming, assuming that I am the MD of, of Goyal, mm. and I'm working, <clears throat> I'm working right now, sorry about that, yeah, and I'm working go. right now, mm -hmm. and, and I get a call from, from the presidency that uh, Kofi, leave your office with immediate effects immediately i'm leaving the office i have no right to take the the company car and drive myself to the house hmm. you are leaving the office the order is that leave office with immediate effects why are you leaving the office with with the office car hmm. it means that i have to find myself an uber and drive myself home mm -hmm. I don't. I won't say that. Let me take the car to the house so that tomorrow when I'm coming, I bring it. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Because it's a, a company property. It doesn't property. work like that. Yeah. Yes, it's company property. Haven't we? Well, you know, in this country where uh, some officers, uh, uh, officers left office and were still driving government car, and and uh, people stopped them in traffic and yeah. collected the car yeah. from them. Yes, yes, yes. It happened. This happened in NDC administration. This happened in NDC administration. Mm -hmm. That is because once you have left, you have no, you have no right using government or, or company property. Immediately you leave, you hand over. So immediately I declare as my stand that I am no longer a member of this party. I'm going to do my thing independent. I have to vacate the seat. Regardless of the time, whether it is six months to election or three months to election, the seat must be declared vacant. And this is my understanding of the constitution and of the laws. Hmm. Anyway. You don't come and tell hmm. me that my decision is for next parliament, so let me enjoy the rest of the benefit that is associated with, with the NPP or the NDC, but next four years, yeah, then you can take it off. I mean, I mean what, would, what, would, what would you put this in the constitution if, it, if it's for next year? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting. Well, if you are enjoying the discussion one on one with Foster Kofi of your Business Week and also a political journalist as well, sharing words on what happened at the Supreme Court, and if he has shared some few um, interesting points. Forgive us the background because he's at an event that I have to, you know, pull him. So forgive us the background. Very soon we end in proceedings. But let's still go back to this 2020, then we come to 2024.
So with the kind of ruling that was given yesterday, it means that the decision that Speaker Ronquay took was wrong. Per the ruling that was given yesterday, it means that the decision that Speaker Ronquay, you know, took was wrong. Then it leads me to the question that can a wrong election produce a legitimate leader or if an election becomes wrong, would it not produce an illegal leader? With reference to <laughs> Andre Siama, I want you to say something on that. Because if you tell me that the person still holds that seat, then there was no need to have said that the person has left or has been dismissed from parliament. There was no need for that. And there was no need for Andre Siama to go as independent candidate in the first place. Uh, I, I, I think I think you're right. Um, the, the decision of the Supreme Court. Um, yes, it suggests that what happened in 2020 was an illegality, and and the question is, <laughs> then we have an illegal leader <laughs> or representative. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that, that, that that looks like it. That looks like mm -hmm. it. I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the lawyers can argue yeah, out, yeah, and, and then we can have a, a fact. Uh, yes, yes. But if if we should test the law, I'm sure we'll get we'll get a good uh, a good answer from there. But from where I sit, yes, I agree. Um, from the, per the decision of the per, per the ruling of the of the Supreme Court, definitely uh, was it a ruling yesterday? Because I know the Supreme Court is going to sit on. Um, yeah, it was uh, a ruling. To, but there, there hasn't been the, final judgment. I just say it was final a ruling. Judgment. Yeah. Okay, okay. So per the ruling yesterday. Yes, uh, what ha what happened in 2020 was more of an illegality, and which has produced a somewhat illegal representative, which needs to be looked at again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. if, so if an individual is interested, the person can take it to the courts, and I'm sure for interpretation, uh, for interpretation I'm sure we can get a, a, a good a good uh, understanding of the whole situation. But yes, illegality produces uh, illegal leaders and once you're illegal leader man you're illegal leader mm. if, if you came if you came through power you came to power through a coup d'etat you're an illegal leader absolutely if you break the election and, and you became a president a leader you're mm. an illegal leader mm. on unless it has not been proven but when it is proven that yes you rigged the election yes you came through uh, the power door. through a coup d'etat mm. You're an illegal leader, mm. and once you're an illegal leader, people will not respect you as such. So that's mm. when you hear uh, international bodies declaring the country and you as they not um, recognize you as the leader of the country and refusing to work with you. Mm. Mm. You get it. So when it is proven, so on in his case, before the ruling yesterday, he was a legal leader. So mm -hmm. the ruling yesterday, mm -hmm. it makes it look like an illegal leader. Mm -hmm. Where I'm saying that if somebody should take the matter to court, there will be a proper interpretation, and we'll know whether it's a legal leader or illegal leader. That's a very you know wonderful <laughs> point by <laughs> Foster Kofi. We'll be, we'll be ending very soon. Um, on a final note, so are we going to have this eighth parliament conclude like the way they normally do, or what is what is going to happen in your opinion? How, what do you see happening? I, I had I had a report a um, few days ago mm. that from the speaker's office um, that the speaker will be recalling parliament um, early November. Oh, okay. So okay. I, I I want to believe I want to believe that we would have parliament to sit and end as they usually do. Uh, I think before December, so that they can go and do their campaigns in their mm. various uh, constituencies. Mm. So I believe they will come back to finish the business of the house. And then we'll continue. Of course, it will not be devoid of um, uh, those uh, <laughs> political <laughs> activities. <laughs> it will be heated because when they come back, when they come back, everybody is claiming majority. Wow. <laughs> and wow. when you're when you're majority, there's a there's a place you sit. You sit on the right right hand right hand side of the speaker. When you're minority, you sit on the left hand side of the speaker. So. When they come back and they all claim majority, I believe all of them want to sit on the right hand side of the <laughs> of the speaker, <laughs> which which may cause some heated debates or activities so in Palace. It so very, it will not be devoid of that issue. It, it will be fun, mm. it will be interesting. Mm. So let's mm. look forward to that. And once the speaker said is is in the process of calling the house back, I'm sure that will happen.
So yes, we, we are likely to have parliament to sit again and conclude their business. In a way, thank you so and much. And mm -hmm. there are a number of decisions that they need to take. Mm -hmm. They Some need to goals. consider yes, yes, the, yes. the budget the budget for next year. Mm -hmm. You know, the budget for the, the, the following year is always presented in the previous year. Mm -hmm. So this will be presented in November for 2025. And they need to discuss it before then. So yes, parliament needs to sit to discuss. Other than that, uh, uh, we'll, 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 we'll come to we'll go to 2025 and you know, there'll be no fiscal policy to work with hmm. for the uh, for the MMDAs if you need to take a decision you need to do you need to pay somebody you can't pay you can't award the contract because you don't have the fiscal policy to work with and that, that policy needs to be discussed and passed in parliament in, in November interesting I don't know, so if you don't do that it's going to delay other activities in 2025. So yes, they really need to come back to discuss um, those very pertinent and important um, uh, policy issues. Hmm. Very, very, very educative, very interesting coming from um, Pastor Kofi. How can people find you if they want to? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on Facebook, uh, hmm. Pastor Kofi Ahovi. I'm on uh, X. Kofi Ahovi, I'm on LinkedIn, Kofi Ahovi. So if you're looking for me, it's easy to find. And then and my, new, week. My, 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 my new portal is also businessweekghana.com. So mm. you can easily find me. If you want to send me an email, when you go to the portal, you can easily send an email or Facebook. As well. You can also find Business Week on Facebook, Business Week Ghana on Facebook. Thank you very much, Fosso Kofi Ahovi, for your time. A media practitioner, a senior colleague, a man of many parts. This has been the man in Okiju and the program Connect with Enoch. I know it's been long since you heard from me. Same time, next week will be coming away with something very interesting. Thank you very much, Kofi Aovi. You're welcome, my brother. All right. Okay. Okay.